into our old English shaving shop and Mr. Cobbs the Barber, which sounds like a contradiction of terms, there are two reasons. Mr. Cobbs was a perfumer in the 1850s, 1860s, and he had a business called Even More Uri and Cobbs, and eventually left the two partners and went on his own, and was a perfumer of note in those days because they were few and far between. Um, the City of London brush makers continue and those are the products that we have in the shop. Each item is a handmade item, whether it's a perfume that's painstakingly made and matured over a period of time, or a handmade clothes, shaving or hair brush. First things that we did in a video to try and show you our well, movie is how an ebony brush was made and the young lady sat there for a laborious amount of time pulling each hair in one after the other and 200 hairs later she had what was the basis of a very nice brush containing wild boar hair why would they use wild boar hair it's the nearest thing to human hair. And people don't know that. So what happens is the same as your nails and your hair, it is made of something as a cross between those two things. It starts off on the animal's hair and turns almost into a bone. And that's why it's so stiff and so difficult to understand why it would work. When you brush your hair with that natural boar bristle, you can feel it going through the hair and not pulling or rooking or dragging at the hair, but gliding through. And it lasts forever because it's made that way. You'd have seen the young lady hand drawing the bristle into the brush one by one. You then see the brush move to a trimming machine and being given what we call a haircut in the trade. So it obviously is the correct amount of length for the hair 
and for the bristle and to make it look uniform and nice. It will then go to the person who puts the adhesion on and he will sit there and laboriously glue it exactly matching the grain of each one. So no two are the same and therefore each one has to match exactly with the grain on the side of the wood how it fits. From there on in he will paper and paper with all different grades of paper until all the little lines and the marks have disappeared. Only then will he start polishing with various polishes and eventually finish up with a very, very soft wheel with pure beeswax polish to give it an ultimate sheen. And that would be a finished product. Badger brushes and how they're made. They're all made exactly the same way. The only difference is, is the black badger comes from the lower regions of the animal and the rear. I won't mention the terminology that's used, but you might have heard something which is called as rough as a badger's whatever, and that obviously gives you a clue as to the black one, which is the cheapest, but not obviously the softest. So that one we'll dispose of. The next one is the grey. The grey material comes off the entire body of the animal. It's very much lighter. It's very much softer than the black and it's really nice and it's known as pure badger. The better ones are either called silver tip where the hairs are white or super badger if the hairs have a bit of blackness coming down and a very soft top. They show thousands of hairs and need on each size 15 times as many hairs. So if that was made of grey you would need to put 15 times more hairs in a silver tip to make exactly the same size brush. And that is made to last. And that's the finest thing. Every single one is made in England. Every single handle that you see in any of this um, movie around our businesses is made in England by hand, every one. The only difference is for traveling purposes, or for our own business purposes, we make the brush by assembling it here in South Africa. And we're very proud of the staff that we employ who are experts in their field. We don't take no for an answer and we don't take second best. If it isn't made properly, it doesn't go in our shop. Welcome to Mr. Cobbs the Barber. This soap is our special shaving soap that lasts you two and a half to three years. It contains co it's coconut based and has an oil from a fruit or a flower. So you get different smells or scents to them. I'll now demonstrate how it works. Take your badger brush, silver tip, in some hot water that you shave with. Get rid of most of the water so the brush is moist and place it on top of the soap. Now normally in the movies they go in circles and circles. With this you don't need to. The fine hairs picks up the soap automatically. So that's more than enough to shave with. If this was your face, what the brush does exfoliates, it softens, it lifts the hair. And it's more hygienic as well in using foam out of a can. The oil also acts as a lubricant for your blades so they last longer. Thick creamy lather. So when you put a Mark III on there, you, get, you always get a good glide. And that's how the soap works. Clean the brush always in cold water, because the animal lives in cold water. He doesn't know the radox bath is what warm water is. Can I go to the tap? Syringe it under a cold tap, and the hairs will jump back to life. On a towel for a couple of seconds. So it fans out and the brush is hygienic and ready for the next shave. Men don't like shaving, it's not their favourite pastime. And men would rather let their wife go and shower and bath or whatever and then begrudgingly go in the bathroom and scratch the few hairs and the gin off. Very, very begrudgingly because they hate shaving. 
we've made something work by making it properly where the formulation of the system make men push their wife out of the way and go into the bathroom first because they actually adore and love shaving and therefore buying the right implements are expensive but they last. Having said that, the badger brush can be very expensive and given the correct cleaning process of each brush which is rammed into the customer in the shop, the brush treated correctly will last 40 years and some are even passed on to the next generation and the next. So a good shaving brush is a wonderful investment and it helps us eat meat once or twice at least a week. We were asked to bring in from overseas that are very nicely made and they are made from a huge cow horn. They're quite beautiful and we're very pleased to bring them in as we believe plastic is rubbish and we would never dream of having plastic things in our shop to insult our customers' intelligence with. Having said that, sometimes when they come in, they need a final buff or a final paper or two just to make sure they're as good as they can be before they go in our shop. Even to the piece of what appears to be brown string through it, it's actually handmade leather thronging. So they're even tied together with a leather throng to hang up so you don't lose the thing and it's always in its place. And once again, an item we get passed on generation after generation. And a thing of beauty really is a joy to behold, it's something lovely. Yesterday we were privileged to take our um, documentary people into a manufacturing jewellers to show them exactly how things were made by hand, one by one. They went through the whole process of making the wax of the item we were making onto the casting of it and then the filing up and pouring of the red hot molten metal, whether it be brass or silver or gold, depending on someone's wallet, um, as to how it would be made and showing the detail of the filing looking like somebody filing an old battleship made of metal to somebody finishing it off like a ring or a piece of magnificent diamond jewellery. It was this type of things you were looking at where they open up with a butterfly mechanism and show how the blade fits and how they last. And believe me, they may be a little bit more expensive than a normal item, but they last a whole lifetime if they're made properly. We make a rubber mould, a silicone mould of the article that we want to make and we cut it open and we, uh, we inject wax into the mould. Then uh, one, once the wax is dry we take the wax out and we build up a tree of the article that we're going to make. This is a tree, uh, then we put a cylinder over it like that with the articles inside. Then we fill that up with investment powder. Um, when that's hard, we take the rubber off the bottom and the articles left inside the, the investment powder. Uh, we put that in the oven and it burns out. Over here we do the casting. Um, once the wax is all melted out of the, out of the flask, it all gets melted out. Um, then we're ready to cast. The temperature being 450. Uh, for casting. So the silver's in there already. So that's a centrifugal casting that's finished now. The metal shot through into the flask and we have to wait for it to cool down before we put it into the water. Oh,
It was a wonderful saying that quality is remembered long after the price is forgotten, which I think is very important in our case, because we make quality things that are made to last.